Are short games bad? I really want to talk about it. Since Hellblade 2 dropped, that conversation has been spinning up again. Hellblade 2 seems to clock in around 5 to 6 hours, and the conversation then revolves around time played versus quality versus price, and then we start to see people get absolutely dunked on like this guy uh, for saying that 5 hours is kind of crazy for a AAA title. So let's talk about it. I'm Solace, this is Solace and Dread. We produce analytical content primarily focused on Square Enix, Nintendo, and Capcom publications. If you like nuanced discussion about gaming, consider subscribing. Also, I'm going to sneak this in. Uh, we actually got a couple of extra copies of this amazing retro-inspired puzzle game called Isles of Sea and Sky. It's a ton of fun, and it fucking oozes charm, like just dripping. So if you want to win a copy, um, like and share the tweet that's at the top of the description of this video. All right, first off, whenever you talk critically about the runtime of games, or particularly short games, the first thing that everyone says, thinking that they're extremely profound in doing so, is, hmm, I'd rather have an eight hour amazing game than a hundred hour game with a ton of filler. And sure, obviously there's truth to that, I feel the same way. But the flip side of that is I'd rather play a 100 hour game that's well developed and fulfilling than a lame 8 hour game that has no replay value. Yeah, I'm looking at you Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Either way, in either scenario, you want your time and money respected, so stop parroting this like you're the Socrates of gaming. The argument can be made at both ends. The hot take is honestly with the price tag and time to beat. Is it bad that a $70 game might only take eight hours or so to finish? I'll just come out and say it and frankly admit it. Uh, I'm in the minority that thinks that a brand new AAA game with a full price tag is not necessarily worth it if it can't give me at least 20 hours of fulfilling playtime. Some of you that are familiar with me uh, might be having a this you moment where you're saying, didn't you cry over Super Mario RPG? And that only takes like 15 hours to finish. And it's true, I'm a hypocrite that way. But I mean, there's obviously exceptions to this. We're talking about the greatest game to ever exist in our tangible realm. You know, that will not be put on the same discussion block as Hellblade 2. I might not like, for example, the length of Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I still played it and enjoyed it immensely, and I knew that I had time if I wanted to, you know, to go and do some of the extras. Um, but the flip side of that experience is probably Ratchet and Clank. Um, I thought the game was polished and kind of fun, but I'll be honest, it was not worth $70. When I finished it, I was shocked at how unfulfilled I was by the end. And I was lying to myself, saying that, oh, this is this was worth the money. But since then, I've come up for air. It just wasn't. One of the biggest issues that I had with that game was actually gameplay related, because I, I think that Ratchet and Rivet should have had a, a bit of a different play style, but the biggest thing that I had a problem with was that there was no replay value and I finished it in under eight hours. I honestly couldn't believe it was over when it was. I actually tried to force myself to play a little longer, <laughs> but there was just no point. I paid $70 for this jam and it was one of the only PS5 exclusives. Like this left a bad taste in my mouth and I don't want to throw my money into a bonfire. So yeah, I traded it in the day after finishing it, and I still don't regret it. I never have a day where I wake up and say, you know what I would love to do is play more Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That was a one-time experience that was mediocre at best, and I am, I was annoyed at the time that I paid $70 for that experience. I personally find that my time and money is very limited these days between work and family and whatever else that I have going on, so I need a fulfilling experience in my gaming. In my personal taste, I tend to gravitate towards games that are about 20 hours or so in length, and you know, to me, that's a game that's 
perfect in that it doesn't overstay its welcome, but it's not so short that I feel like I got sucker punched, right? I'm scared of paying full price for a hundred hour slog, but I also don't want to do the same thing for eight hours of mediocrity either. That pisses me off even more since, you know, they're fucking me hard and fast up front and then they ask me to leave the money on the nightstand before kicking me out of the room. Maybe it's my old and jaded eyes, but can maybe you can help me see it. But is it a bad thing that I don't like super short games because the internet tends to act like it is? But that's just my taste. I don't want to drop my money into something that I'm really only going to play once or twice before I'm done with it. And there's not a ton of examples of this in the AAA space, but when it happens, it's noticeable because of how uncommon it is. Games that have a short campaign like you know, some of the Call of Duties or Battlefield 1 or Titanfall 2, they're offset by the couple hundred hours of value in the multiplayer. So it's hard to even give games like those flack. Um, and then the indie titles, they don't usually come with massive price tags. So games like Rhyme or The Stanley Parable or some of these classics, you know, um, they come to mind in this discussion, but they're cheap. You know, the same can even be said of Hellblade 2. This triple A title is kind of getting flack for half of the already short playtime being a walking simulator with no replay value in it. But I can't really find a valid complaint on the game since it's on Game Pass, so you can get it and play it cheaper if you want. And furthermore, it's only $50 as opposed to 70. That being said, games this short are not going to have a profound effect on me, and knowing that it's only six hours or so turns me off completely. I will never pick this up. In my eyes, that's a waste of $50. I am one of those people who openly admit to wanting a runtime uh, for my hard-earned money. And if people were honest with themselves, they would probably say the same thing. That ratio exists for everybody at some level. Would you really be okay paying $70 for a one-hour game? If you answer yes, then you're either lying, or you don't respect your money, or you're an idiot, or maybe some combination of all three. If there's criticism of a AAA game being full price with a short runtime, the response shouldn't be the extreme opposite of 100 hours of filler is worse, when it's obvious that the gold standard compromise should be 15 to 20 hours, like Super Mario RPG, the greatest game ever made. But you know, this is just my personal take, but what's valuable to me is not necessarily going to be valuable to someone else. And I'm genuinely asking, I'm not putting this out here to say one way or the other, I'm genuinely asking if I'm seeing something incorrectly. And maybe you can enlighten me, but to me, you know, I think a minimum of 15 hours is the least I could ask for if it's gonna get my money. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon, and long live the Turtle Kingdom.